Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Okay, so let's. My name is Tigran Shabazian, and I'm a program manager at Microsoft System Center team. Uh, I'm here with Roman Ufere from Wirecode, and today we are going to talk about managing SQL Server with Operation Manager 2012 and System Center Advisor. If you guys noticed that uh, the title of the session outside is inconsistent with the title that we have, we did like about a week ago uh, change in the title. So if you're here to uh, listen about IS and Windows Management Server, we, this session is not going to cover, but we have a lot of interesting things about SQL Server to share with you. So please uh, stay with us, and we will make sure that you will have interesting session. And just out of curiosity, I would like to ask you, who had a chance to attend our SQL Server monitoring session uh, last year at MMS? Please raise your hand. Oh. Good. Almost nobody. <laughs> so, okay. So, great. Today we have something special for every one of you. So, so be ready for good uh, news and announcement. And let me go ahead and get started with a uh, couple words about agenda. So we'll start in this session to talk about top reasons to manage SQL Server with Operation Manager uh, 2012 SP1. Then we will continue with overview of SQL management pack, where we'll start with short uh, story about evolution of SQL management pack, and then we'll share new features and functionalities that we have added in recent version of Management Pack. Then you'll learn about proactive monitoring of your SQL Server with System Center Advisor. And close to the end of the session, we'll have a lot of best practices to share with you. And um, right after that, we have some also news about SQL Azure Management Pack that we would like to share with you and then we'll leave some time for Q&A. So, uh, as you already know, System Center 2012 is focused on three primarily peer, uh, uh, three pillars, like infrastructure management, service delivery and automation, and application management and monitoring. So, since we today are going to talk about operation manager and system center advisor, both of them are primarily focusing on infrastructure management and monitoring and application management. So, and the top reasons to manage SQL Server with Operation Manager are the following. SQL uh, Operation Manager provides you a single pane of glass into your SQL-based solution. So it helps you to monitor health of your SQL servers as well as databases. And not only that, because it provides you visibility into other layers of your infrastructure, and thus providing a full picture of it. And you will learn that, uh, that uh, you will learn that the new SQL Server Management Pack enhances that experience even more by providing better visualization. Now, Operation Manager with SQL Server MP helps you to uh, do a quick discovery of your SQL infrastructure where it will provide you a full inventory of your SQL service as well as databases. And all this will come with a full monitoring capability. And with integrated solution with other systems like uh, TFS and uh, other uh, third-party ticketing system, it will improve your productivity in such a way that alerting that will be uh, detected in Operation Manager will, will be able to create a ticket automatically in your ticketing system. And the most important thing we would like to share with you that uh, SQL Server Management Pack leverages our SQL Server Team expertise. And the team knows the product inside out, and it also combines knowledge that we acquired over multiple years from real customers, from you guys. And all this knowledge is available for disposal via Operation Manager with SQL Server MP. And by the way, we really value 
the SQL Server community knowledge uh, and customer feedback. And in fact, we are gathering input and feedback via different channels like customer support, uh, customer service support cases, different beta programs, top programs, and different case studies. And as a result, once we gather, we keep uh, addressing issues that we learn from the, those uh, inputs and feedbacks. And as you will see today, that Roman will talk about new version of SQL Management Pack, and we'll share some news there with you. Absolutely. Uh, they... Turn on. <laughs> so let me turn on. OK. Try it now. Okay. Right now it's better? Absolutely. Tigran, thank you so much for this little help. OK. Uh, today I want to uh, start talking about the SQL Server MP experience, which we want to show to you from some story. Because I love stories. It's, it's, it, it's really interesting and cool. So uh, I want to tell you a story about the SQL Server MP evolution from ancient time, OK, at least for me, from 2008. From 2008. <laughs> OK. It was a uh, year when we released a version of the SQL Server 2008 management pack. It was like an old school providing basic functionality. Sometimes, you know, it caused some performance degradation monitor system uh, and also generate some false alerts, which is really painful for us, for operations, for DBAs, for IT administrators. It's really painful. By the way, in 2010, we've released the next version of that management pack, SQL Server 2008R2. And that time, we've added a lot of new features. First of all, we added really new and improved the space monitoring capability. Uh, we solved the problem with false alerts. We solved the problem with the performance degradation monitoring system, which was really serious. Uh, it was a great time for SQL Server MP, from my perspective. But it was not the end, of course. In 2012, we've released the next version for 2008-12 uh, version of the SQL Server, where we added support for always-on. We added policy-based monitoring for always-on capability of SQL Server MP, for SQL Server. We also added monitoring for mirroring, replication, for uh, database backup. We added a lot mm, much more new features. And now, in 2013, we don't want to disappoint you. And we will not disappoint you, absolutely, I'm sure. So what's new in the SQL Server, the new SQL Server MP? What's something exciting, something new, something fresh? Of course, here's uh, three important things which I want to share with you today three important parts of new SQL Server MP functionality. Let's go. The first thing, we've added a lot of new metrics, perform uh, uh, performance collection rules, which right now provide you in the SCOM through our management pack, additional metrics which allow you to understand how actively your database is used, to understand what the load for your database, where it monitoring, uh, where it performance collection for active connections, sessions, uh, requests, and of course, uh, we added a uh, performance collection rule to monitor a uh, number of simultaneous database transactions. Of course, there are no monitors on these performance collection rules, you know, because there are no any industry standard what is bad and what is good for these metrics. There are no common thresholds. By the way, these metrics could be very valuable when you need to perform the root cause analysis, when you uh, suffer from some performance issue on the SQL Server MP, and you need to figure out, OK, is it caused by some huge load from my application, from our users, or some other reason? Next, we've added new performance monitors to the SQL Server MP. We added uh, some new features in space monitoring. We added uh, performance monitors for disks where your database files are allocated. We also added uh, monitoring to uh, uh, check the CPU usage to CPU, CPU consumption by the SQL Server process and uh, added monitoring for thread usage. And of course, we added uh, some monitors to, to care about memory. 
which is really new for SQL Server MP. We have known it before. And right now, we have some mentors which allow you to understand how we use in cache, how efficiently we use cache, and how we use memory. And of course, we added some monitors which allow you to detect cases when database issue is caused with a poor database design or poor, your, uh, poor application design, so you know that sometimes it could be a reason. And finally, it's a thing which is not a new performance counter, new monitor. It's a really impressive thing which were absent in all version of previous management pack. We've done it because of new capabilities of this SCOM 2012, where we're able to implement absolutely custom graphical interface, absolutely custom new usage experience for you. And I hope that you will be really excited to see what we've done for you. Do you want to see this dashboard today? Okay, I'll show you some screenshots today. I'm just kidding. Of course, it will be a live show for you. And so let's go to my favorite part of any session. Let's go to live demo. So we have uh, the SQL Server Management Pack, our old good friend, uh, good friend, good friend, who now knows some new tricks. And here's some new tiny trick. Pay attention. It's a database summary dashboard, which I want to show you today. I'm playing like opera on, on her show when she creates some powers. <laughs> Should I click it? Oh, no. <laughs> OK, come on. It's time. So here it is. It's our new dashboards, thing which you never could <laughs> see in any SQL, in any management pack in SCOM. Do you like at least how it looks? Come on. It's really first time. And so it looks not only just fine, just nice. For me, it's, it's like a real breakthrough which we've done for SQL Server team. And right now, SQL Server man Management Pack not just look cool and smart the inside. We are ready to introduce a new phase of the SQL Server MP, which definitely looks more, than, uh, more like a phase than before. By the way, let's look what we have here on this dashboard. It's a database summary dashboard which provides you a real single pane of glass to database information. So here we have a pretty standard thing. It's a state view which allows us to choose a database which we uh, want to show in, uh, on this dashboard. And when I choose some dashboard here, whole, we, uh, whole dashboard is updated. And I can see on all controls here specific information for my database, which I just chosen. So at the right side, so it's some details about database. But of course, the most important part is the new controls. For example, here you can see the stack chart, which provides us detailed information about space consumed by our database. Here we can see not only uh, space allocation for the database itself inside of database file. Of course, you know that we monitor also a disk space if auto growth setting is enabled for database. It's existing functionality, and of course, we show it on this dashboard. And right now, because we have for my database auto growth settings enabled, so I can see that uh, we have really good condition here. So I'm just curious do you know what that red line means? Just imagine. What is it? Absolutely. So it's very intuitive, yeah? Red line means threshold, and we've implemented it here. Of course, when you change your threshold in space monitors, it will be changed here, definitely. So, by the way, here we can see uh, information about space. And not only here, because we also have some smart charts, we called it, which provides us information in real time, of course, as dashboard at, at all. Information about database total free space and log free space for this database. And I, actually, I, I want to be bad today and simulate some failure related with uh, uh, space. Let's think how we can do it. Of course, we can put a lot of data inside of my database, but sometimes it could be happen with a different reason. For example, I have some very bad, really nasty operations who decided to 
put some file to my drive where I allocate my database. And so I just copy some, not too big, but big enough file to disk where I have my database. And right now I can see either in computer, uh, at my computer, that there are no any free space at disk E where one of files of my database is located. Which is supposed to be that, okay, so it could be not a big issue because actually I have two files in my database and second file located on the disk F where I have some free space. But I don't enable the autogrow setting for that file. Which means that right now my database where files already fulfilled with data, right now this database is not healthy. Let's go to our dashboard and look how, uh, what we can see right now there. Oh, so at least we can see that uh, our smart chart turns to red light. What it means? As a, as a threshold, it's very clear that we've introduced not just the charts here. They are smart because they uh, show us the related monitor state. You, uh, so it's, it's, it's very intuitive. When you just look to this dashboard, right now you, you can see what's going on. You can see that uh, this monitor is not in healthy state. Uh, and so I, I believe that in a few seconds we also can see that on a big dashboard, on a big stack chart, we also have updated information about, uh, about uh, uh, consumed space. At the same time, right now, I want to pay attention to another uh, part of this dashboard. Of course, we also show here the alerts which we show, which, we, which we've got. Okay, so right now, all information, including charts, also updated. You can see the, uh, that, okay, this part should be enough. Okay, our line crossed the threshold. And so uh, on our smart chart, we can see uh, that total free space is degraded. And right now, we have only 3% available, which is critical for any database, of course. And if we go to alert, we also can see that the database is out of space. Uh, look to our scenario. I, I, I want to show you that this dashboard is not just nice or good looking. It really helps operations to resolve issues because we have all things which we need on the same screen. Right now, we go to alert, which we have, and go to product knowledge. And so here, of course, so operations usually need to go Right, uh, right now, go to resolution and detect. Okay, what can I do here? And the first way to resolve this issue is pretty straightforward. Increase, increase allocated size uh, for a file and or turn or to grow on. And I know that in this case, I can fi fix this issue this way very easily. So I'm closing this knowledge base and go to my SQL server. And uh, turn on my SQL Server Management Studio. Where it is? I have no SQL Server here. <laughs> I believe no. I believe I should have something here. Uh, and otherwise, it will be very, very strange. Okay. You think that it's scroll? Just type in. <laughs> type in SQL. You think that it, it helps? Usually it helps. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. Let's double check. Okay, still, we, uh, we suffer from this issue. Uh, let's go down. Oh, fortunately, I just need to scroll. Yeah, okay. So right now, let's go to our space monitoring database and look to these properties. Right now, in files, we definitely can see that we have autogrow enabled for only one file. For second file, you can see that autogrow settings is set to false, to none, none. And I just enabled easily. So right now, when I press OK, right now, uh, we can be sure that both files uh, and the database itself is able to consume whole space on both disk drives. Either if disk E has no any free space, we have a lot of free space on the second drive. And right now, we can go to the operations manager and check that it's fast enough. 
to show us that we've resolved this issue. Let's go there. Okay. It will be fast enough. Absolutely. I, I, I hope that it will be soon. Right now, we just can see that uh, it's captured some t during some time when we had that issue. Uh, it showed us information about uh, the free space, and it, it, it shown us information uh, on the smart chat. Uh, it should update pretty fast. Right now, I just want to show you another capability of this dashboard. Another good thing which we can have here. It's not so straightforward as other things which I just shown to you. We can just right click on this, uh, on this smart chat. And for example, go to diagram view right from here. We don't need to find the same database in state view or either. We just can click anywhere on this dashboard and review the structure of the database. So here I can confirm that we have two files on disk F and on disk E, and they still suffer from some issue. Let's double check that, okay, so uh, right now you can see, you know that usually SCOM react in minutes. So right time we have a very fast demo, and uh, by the way, SCOM is able to react on it. So right now we already can see that smart chat is already changed state because our monitor did it faster than, uh, than performance collection uh, rules. And we already can see that everything is okay with our, uh, with our database because smart chat is turned to green state. And other controls also will be updated, for example, in a minute, and, uh, and operations can see that issue is resolved because in real life, usually it takes some time. And right now we can see that, okay, on our big, nice stack chat, we also cross the threshold line in a in different direction, and right now everything is okay. But this case is not only one case which I want to show you today about usage of this new dashboard, because some new uh, additional smart charts is available here. Uh, it's another case also related with disk drives. Sometimes we uh, suffer from uh, overloading of disk drives when uh, SQL Server itself or any third party application. Do you have any question? Please? Just, just one thing. Could you have a button in the graphical view to enable auto grow on the disk when you have the error? Could you please repeat your question? Could you, in SCOM, when yeah. you have the graphical view with the two disks, uh -huh. have a, a, a task to enable auto grow instead of going to SQL Server Management Studio? Do it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really interesting idea. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, that's why, because uh, that, that's really good to have your feedback right now. That's why I wanted to show it to you today, because major functionality of the SQL management pack based on your feedback. So it will be very appreciated if you provide me today tons of feedback, because this management pack is still in production, and we can use your feedback to figure out, okay, so what features you, is most desired for you. For example, like this task, it's very interesting. So uh, let's go back to the, next, uh, to the uh, next part of our demo related with disk. I want to show you how we can figure out with issue uh, when our disk overloaded. And to do it, I, uh, I have another SQL server where we, uh, where another database is located. And uh, of course, we also can see uh, there could be two scenarios. One the SQL Server itself create a huge load to the database. And in this case, so it's, it exists, it's, a, it's possible. We also have sometimes another case when we have some application server on any other applications which deployed on the same server. Of course, it's not recommended. Everybody knows, but ev not everybody, but major people do it anyway. And today, I want to show you how we figure out either this case, when not, uh, when not SQL Server, but any other application uh, causes serious disk degradation. And we monitor it in SQL Server Management Pack because it affects SQL Server. It affects any database which is located on the same drive. So for this simulation scenario, I'm using the pretty popular utility uh, called SQL IR. 
Versatility is created to simulate load on a disk drive with SQL Server. And again, I want to be very nasty right now. I, I create a lot of, a lot of load for, uh, for, for these drives. Let's go to performance monitor. And so we can see that we've created very huge impact. We create huge load to drive G, where uh, files of, of our database are located. Let's go to, uh, back to SCOM and look what we have here to detect this situation. First of all, let's uh, focus on another database. I called it latency database because it's mostly related with it. Oh, SCOM is so fast. Look, I just run that utility and we already have issue uh, which shown here. Again, it's, it's not expressed as a change on the chart, but we already have a state changed. We already can see a red light here. And we, all, uh, and of course, right now, okay, read latency also changed. And so we, are, we, are, we already know that it's not okay with our latency database right now. There's not, no, not so good case for us. And while we're waiting when other charts will be updated, let's pay attention. Okay, we can see that everything is not okay. And we need to figure out, okay, what's going on? So these monitors usually uh, tell us that there could be several reasons, uh, like two reasons which I just shown to you. It could be a, uh, a serious performance impact by SQL Server itself. And the second reason, it could be impact from the third party utility, which we know right now happens. And some other smart charts here help us to detect this case. Because here we have, we have charts which show us information about their performance counters, which I mentioned at the start of my speech. Active sessions, requests, connections, and transactions. And here it's, it's pretty clear. We have absolutely zero there. This database is not used right now. But when somebody want to use it, he can do it because, because disks are overloaded. So in this case, when we can see the value of these four performance counters as a, as a zero, it's pretty straightforward that this uh, performance issue on this disk drive caused by some other application. Uh, ju uh, just to example, I want to show you how usually for normal database, like for example, operations manager database, this uh, chart looks like. Yeah, we can see that this database really used. Yes, there, there are no zero values. And if for this database uh, we, uh, we will face with uh, some performance issue on disk drives, okay, we can, uh, we can bind these things together and detect what's going on. But when, we go, uh, but when we talk about our latency database, these performance counters and these smart chats helps us to detect that it's not a SQL Server reason, SQL Server issue. It's a SQL Server issue, but He's not uh, caused it. Right now we can see that charts already updated. We can see uh, some spike there. Look, yeah. Not only monitor values, we also can see that trend, uh, the triangle sign. Well, when we said trend that it raised up, we can see real value, we can see chart. And right now it's, it's a good time to, to understand, okay, so what we can figure out. Uh, there are several ways. The easiest way here just to kill process which affect my favorite, my lovely SQL Server. Should I kill it for you? No? Let's allow that third party application to affect our business. Let's kill it and free our SQL Server. Okay. Usually when I run this utility on this machine, it just... Uh, affect all processes on this machine. Fortunately, right now, it allowed me just to relog on and work. Okay, right now we can see in performance monitor uh, that we have zero values there. That's great, and I hope that SCOM will tell me very soon that everything is okay here. Yeah. Let's go back to our operations manager and wait for a couple of minutes uh, when it uh, updates. Uh, right now, let me also uh, tell you slightly more about this dashboard, because let's pay attention that just, of course, it, it's intuitive, but especially for you, uh, or for person who just 
missed a chance to attend this session. It's so sad. But fortunately, he has a legend which allows him to understand what, what everything means. We can see that uh, smart chats where we, can, where we have no monitor attached, it just has a blue color, which is like a modern UI style. Uh, uh, but for monitors, uh, for, the, for smart charts, where we have monitors attached, so uh, we, we, we can uh, count on error warning or healthy colors, which are very, uh, which we're familiar with, because it's, it's traditional color on a uh, road, lights, in SCOM, et cetera. So right now, uh, we can see that everything is updated. Can you take a question? Everything is good, and we're ready for the next question. Okay, just a couple of things. Can you drill down further to see exactly what was actually spiking? It's like, for instance, this dashboard you're showing me, right? Mm -hmm. Can you click to drill down to get like this? Does it tell me, you know, which which mount point, which file group, which data file? It's 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 a really good question uh, because uh, what we want to do for you. We want to implement the end-to-end -end monitoring scenarios where you don't just have, for example, nice dashboards, okay, you, you, you have it and you can use it in some cases. But we want to implement the end-to-end -end scenarios. That's why we, uh, right now, we're showing uh, at this session only this, it's a database summary dashboard. We have in our roadmap for the SQL Server MP other dashboards like a DB engine summary dashboard which allows us to drill down into the next level. And then here, we also uh, might be to need uh, to drill down then, for example, to, to files. And on file level, then detect, okay, what disk drive is affected. Actually, uh, either in this case, uh, for monitor which, uh, which is related with the uh, uh, disk latency, we also provide in other context information about disk. So we're able just to right click on this. I, I don't want to repeat the simulation actually because we need to go back again after that. Uh, but uh, you can just, as I, as I shown for a space monitoring scenario, we can right click and open, for example, Health Explorer or open that alert and see there in alert context what database and what disk is affected. It's, uh, it it allows us to figure out it right in the, this dashboard, but of course we also want to implement the next level of dashboards. Okay. You're right. One, it, one more question, sorry. Yeah. And also, can you pick any other, are these, are these static metrics or can you add or take or swap any ones out. It's like, for instance, let's say you want virtual file stats as well. Can you add a different counter rather than at least static counters? Uh, right now, on these dashboards, we, we, we've implemented uh, the static set of uh, monitored uh, metrics and monitored metrics, just assuming some scenario. Okay. But of course, it's, it, it, uh, it's a good idea to create something customizable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a great idea. Thank you. And, Thank you. And actually, there's a session about uh, dashboards today at 4 p.m. So this is going to be about dashboards, and basically, uh, uh, operation manager provides a customizable. Uh, free, uh, you can extend dashboards, so I, you're more than welcome to attend that session. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so, actually, uh, right now we have a happy ending because of both issues is resolved, and I shown to you how this new usage experience, how this new dashboard allow operations, allow you, allow all of us to resolve issues. It's not just a nice thing. It really helps us. It's, a, it's the biggest thing which we can provide to operations to make complex thing simpler, to visualize it, to allow you to uh, understand what's going on with your environment from the first look. So that's what we've done for you and what we are going to continue to do the next time. Because I believe that all IT operations, DBAs, IT administrators who work with SQL Server deserve the best monitoring solution. And I want to be sure that we can provide this best monitoring solution in the SQL management pack for you. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. okay thank you, Roman. So this is, was great because with this dashboard, you can identify your issue, uh, see what exactly happens with your system, and then take in corrective actions. But what if I will tell you that with proactive monitoring, with System Center Advisor, you will be able to prevent those issues from happening. And uh, this 
even will not require any extra operation, uh, uh, management server, or it will not create even an overload, uh, overhead for your operational database, because everything will be delivered from the cloud for you. And in a couple words, I will recap how System Center Advisor works. So uh, when you have a lot of ser SQL servers in your environment, so, uh, on a periodic basis, System Center Advisor will scan and basically monitor your c server configuration, and that server configuration will be sent up to the cloud, where System Center Advisor, which is cloud service, will process the configuration uh, on a regular basis and will apply some of the knowledge that uh, uh, CSS team, cust uh, Microsoft customer service support team, learned from a lot of cases worldwide, and they created rules that finding the best, best practices and best recommendation for your particular server configuration. And server configuration, after processing, those best practices identified and sent back to the cust customer in form of system center alerts. And we have seen that uh, uh, more than 50% of the SQL Server issues is happening because of uh, misconfiguration and wrong configuration or some other uh, things that we can identify early in the phase and let you know so you can take corrective action. Now, the benefit of proactive monitoring with System Center Advisor is really by doing that constant and uh, proactive monitoring, it prevents SQL Server and database from any configuration problems. And it reduces the downtime and improves performance for your SQL servers. As well as when already issue happened, then it also helps you with uh, quick resolution because uh, later on you will see that not only it will give you like recommendation, actionable recommendation, but also it will tell you the full uh, knowledge base article about what you need to do, what kind of action you have to do, and basically it's available for instantly for access for you. Now, uh, let's see how uh, System Center Advisor helps you. With proactive configuration assessment, it finds any uh, unpatched SQL servers that you have in your environment. So, uh, if you manage SQL Server, you know how difficult it is to take your server with specific configuration and identify which set of patches are relevant for your server config. And Advisor it does, it, uh, does it for you. And also, it will find all any misconfiguration in the, uh, af after processing the configs that uploaded to System Center Advisor. And when you have configuration combination of properties that unsupported, it also will detect and would let you know. Now, with System Center Advisor, you have an access to your configuration in one single place. So because when it's sending configuration up to the cloud, all those information is accessible for you. So let's say you have a big uh, IT uh, infrastructure with multiple servers, so it gives you ability to access and see all your server configuration in one place. And not only that, it also gives you an easy way to detect changes in your between snapshot of your configuration, which helps you uh, easily locate the problem when problem happens by answering the question, what changed? And it's, um, later on, you'll see how System Advisor highlights the change. Uh, Tigran, I think that actually with uh, this uh, functionality, we would be able, uh, for example, to prevent us from that space issue with Autogrow, because we could detect that, okay, we have Autogrow disabled for the second file. Occasionally, somebody, some bad variations did it. And uh, uh, in this case, a C Advisor will help us to detect this issue before it happens. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, another good thing that in, if you have an image of your machine, for example, so uh, through System Center Advisor and with configuration change detection, you will be easily uh, finding those issues, whether telling you your fresh image with SQL database, whether it's problematic and has some config issues, 
or there's some problems in your process that right after rolling out the VHD, you have some process that changing configuration and uh, making it something that potentially can affect your availability or performance. Great. And the last thing in this slide, what I should have, we also noted that many uh, uh, SQL Server issues happens when basic server configuration also changed. And here, I would like to highlight that System Center Advisor is monitoring not only SQL Server uh, and databases, but also the basic settings of the um, uh, server itself, as well as multiple other workloads like Link, Server, SharePoint, and other. But back to this example, we have noticed that many times that IP change or uh, server name change causing your communication issues with SQL Server. And those kind of issues also will be detected by System Center Advisor. Now, earlier today, you, uh, whoever pa participated in overview session for System Center, it has been uh, announced that now we have System Center Advisor integrated with Operation Manager. And System Center Advisor Connector, which is available for download uh, uh, at 10 a.m. since 10 a.m. earlier today. So with this connector, Operation Manager Preview enables Advisor to be an attached service to your Operation Manager deployment. So now on, you don't have to do any special, special things, that are extra things that you used to be uh, doing before. By the way, I just wonder, how many of you had a chance to work with System Center Advisor uh, up until now? Okay, Good. not too many hands, but thank you. So I strongly encourage today, try it out, like download that uh, recent uh, System Center Advisor connector and try it out. And you'll see how, how much help you can get, especially with managing SQL servers. And let's see a demo of System Center Advisor. Uh, Roman, can I get your help to switch there? Okay. So what I have here this is our favorite dashboard that Roman was displaying. And in this environment, I did download it earlier today, that uh, connector. And what I would like to show here in monitoring space on the uh, left-hand side, I'll scroll down here. So let me use that mouse. And I will see here System Center Advisor node. This is new node. And it will appear as soon as you will download that connector. And within that node, I have that alert section that gives me all alerts, system center advisor alerts that delivered into my system center operation manager console from the cloud. And those alerts are, I'll show a couple of them and I'll show you how exactly it helps, helps me uh, with my managing SQL server. So in my environment here, in the same environment we're sharing with Roman, I have two management server, uh, no, sorry, uh, SQL servers, right? And uh, I'm monitoring for several days already, about five days. Now let me take an example of one of the alerts here, which says that SQL server database present without a clean consistency check. So this is kind of alert that I would like to understand what exactly this tells me. And in, here, in alert description, I, I can read more. And that alert description will give me a full picture what happens. It says that SQL Server database does not have a record of error-free DB consistency check. Or it could be because DB uh, consistency check has not been run since the database was created. And there's more text there, but I will summarize it for you. All it says, like, there's a consistency check uh, missing, so w we recommend you to run it because potentially, if you will not do that, it may cause you a problem and it will hit you hard. So what I, I here I discover that there is something that I need to act on, and my action will be I will first of all see what database is happening on. So the database name is space monitoring DB in this case. 
Now, and without leaving my operation manager console, I would like to address this issue. And the way I will do it, I will go to our favorite new dashboard, uh, SQL Server 2012 dashboard. And here, I will search for that database. What the name was? Space. Space. Space monitoring DB, and you, here you can see that this particular database reporting green, just because the, today we don't have any issue. But the system center advisor told me that if I will not take care of it, the issue may happen. I will select it here. When I select, you can take a look on the right-hand side in SQL database task list, we have check database consistency tasks. So what I can do, I just can click and run my DB consistency check right from here without leaving Operation Manager console. So this is one example that how it can detect a potential problem and warn you ahead of time so you can take an action. Now I'll, I'll show you another example here that uh, let's take a look on that. Uh, SQL Server database present without, no, uh, present without a backup. You may see I have a lot of those. So this is another thing that just, it will let you know that you don't have a backup. But the nice thing about it, like in your environment, you may uh, identify that some of the rules are not applicable for your case. And the in this particular case, let's say, if I decided that I don't mind that this, from this server, I don't want to do a data, database a backup, so what I can do, I can easily manage uh, alerts from here by, on the right side, I have advisor task when I can either click, say, ignore alert or manage alert rules. So when I will do that, it will tell... Uh, it will ask from me what exactly I want to do. So I can either dismiss this particular alert or all alerts from that selected server or all alerts from that rule. Now, uh, since we, we mentioned that System Center Advisor is a uh, cloud service, now, but as you have seen that the cloud service delivers all information here directly to your operation manager console. But I, it's, if I, I don't have to have operation manager installed to access all information that I uh, get from a system center advisor. And in fact, if I will go online, I can access same information about my SQL servers from the cloud. And here, I will show you that I have same set of alerts. Okay. And the nice thing about each and every alert, it gives you immediate, instant access to the knowledge base. And let me show you how it does. So for example, I have the, this particular example here that SQL Server failure, instant file initial, initialization is not enabled. I will click on that, and here in the alert details, I can scroll and read information about that alert. But also I have that magic link here that says, click here to view solution and knowledge base. And when I will click on this, it directly takes me to the knowledge base article where I do have full details about symptoms, uh, what exactly causes, and resolution steps. So basically, uh, each and every rule that we have in System Center Advisor are backed up by CSS uh, team, uh, rules that created by CSS team, and uh, uh, we keep adding those rules uh, for different solution, including SQL Server. Yes, please. You have a question. Good question. Okay. 
Okay, so there's a question, why should I send that all my configuration data up to the cloud and I cannot do that same thing with management pack locally? But the answer to that, the example with database uh, thing is basically was just a quick example that we uh, presented, but in the cloud, there are many rules are keep adding every time, and our CSS team is working hard on adding new, uh, new rules to the uh, advisor set of rules. And those rules are growing where the information on your management pack is uh, usually static. You need to get to uh, an update manually or get, wait until we'll release a new uh, management pack version, which is we're trying our best to do it uh, frequently, but that's one of the benefits that you can get. Yeah, out absolutely. Of it. We, we want to release this new version of SQL Server Management Pack more frequently, but we can't compete with the servers itself because the advisor team is able to release the new rule every. Yeah, we frequently, like about uh, every few months. Yeah, we just can't get it. <laughs> and uh, by, by, by the way, uh, some of the uh, rules which was just uh, shown already implemented the SQL Server Management Pack. For example, the backup status is monitored there. So uh, you, 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 you can have some things uh, also in the SQL, SQL Server Management Pack, of course. But let me give you a great example where the, the management pack usually cannot do. So for example... It's impossible. I'll, I'll sh show you. So for example, uh, if I will go to the manage... Uh, I have an ability to go and view all my alert rules. Right? And this alert rules will give me all available rules for my uh, system center advisor. When from here, I can quickly find SQL related rules. SQL. Okay, I have about more than 100. So within those titles, right, there's one of the rules saying that. SQL Server is missing knowledge base article and has exactly specific knowledge base article and tells you that if you will not install this, it potentially will affect your either availability or performance. Those kind of information that only on the service level we can keep uh, up to date and let you know on the base, uh, frequent basis. Okay, does it answer your question? So do, uh, the question is whether those rules eventually will get to the management pack. Roman. So uh, backup is already there. And regarding the DBCC check, uh, I think that it's another good feedback. No, uh, no, I'm talking uh, the question, if no, I understand yeah. it correctly, is that knowledge base article detection, missing knowledge based article detection, whether eventually it will uh, be in included in the management pack. Roman? Uh, I think that we need to figure out it. Actually, I, I would like to talk about it with you after the session. Okay, there's another question there. Yeah, I was uh, wondering, um, how about uh, for SQL cluster setups, uh, database engineering setups, um, is there any advantage going to like, SQL Center uh, infrastructure and then having a Oh, so the question was like about uh, system center advice, uh, whether it helps with SQL Server with clustering. Okay, uh, uh, I'll invite Joseph from our team, uh, and Joseph Chan is basically a system center advisor professional here, and <laughs> he knows most of the answers. So the answer uh, question is uh, whether system center advisor helps us with uh, SQL Server clustering solution. Uh, yeah, advisor is basically, well, advisor is basically cluster aware. Um, and uh, it depends. So, so the advisor knowledge is written uh, and created by the um, Microsoft uh, Customer Support and Services Organization. And uh, it actually depends on case flow that basically comes in from kind of like worldwide uh, customer base on depending on the issues that they face before we create this best practice knowledge. So we don't actually explicitly go out and like randomly find some you know, uh, knowledge uh, for every single component for SQL. We only look for things that we know definitely are creating problems for people 
uh, that uh, misconfiguration is observed, and typically then we go out and um, implement rules uh, on those type of issues. Okay, but uh, all in all, we do we are uh, uh, cluster aware. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me? Sorry, technical issue here. So, uh, so here is a set of rules where I can access my rules of System Center Advisor and uh, for the flexibility that System Center Advisor gives me is also I can select rules that I don't want to apply to my configuration and by doing that in my ignored alert rules I will see all rules that I don't want to apply to my configuration, where uh, in some cases I would like to minimize things that create noise for me. So with this, I would like to ask Roman to share uh, some of the best practices about SQL Server mon uh, monitoring and management. Okay, Roman? I would like to do it, but before, I just want to pay attention because I, I'm looking to a column faces, and it looks like that we are not shown good enough what we've just done. So let's go to Operations Manager. It's here. And let's go to our dashboard. And try to remember what Tigran just done at the beginning of his demo. He got an alert about wrong configuration from advisor. And he will be able to resolve it directly in our dashboard. Because uh, in the dashboard, we have all database tasks which allow us to fix the, uh, for example, DBCC check, and sometimes in future I believe that uh, the autogrow task also appears there. <laughs> so that's a great scenario. Actually, in the SQL Server Management Pack, we have a dozen views, dozen different views which you need to discover to monitor different monitoring scenarios. Right now, we're moving to a new form when you can see, when you can look into one place. And exactly there, in the same place, in the same dashboard, you're not just able to detect your issue, but you're also able to resolve it directly in the SCOM. We are making SCOM, we are making SQL Server Management Pack, like a unified solution for detection and for resolution of your issues. This feature makes dashboard approach Really great. I, I strongly believe that we have to follow this way. And that's why I love this dashboard. And that's why I hope that you will also love this dashboard. I hope that somebody here already loves it. Just raise your hand. Who loves this dashboard right now? Not too much. Come on. <laughs> great. So that's exactly what the feedback what I wanted to have. Uh, great. Thank you, Roman. So one thing I just want to add. Uh, so you, you told about that uh, auto growth flag, right? Yeah. So something uh, that advisor, by the way, can detect that ahead yeah. of time and let you know that the flag has been changed. So let me quickly show that for you. And uh, if I will go back to my advisor alerts, from here, so what I have, I have ability here to <laughs> click on my particular SQL server, and from here, see view configuration. And if I will go to the view configuration, it will give me all config uh, configurations and settings that for that particular server. So let's see, like, this is list property value. Now, the nice thing about uh, advisor, it also gives me ability to show you configuration changes in such a way that this is what exactly happened in the uh, last several days. And I asked also, by the way, uh, to create a fake change, and which is max server memory. So let me see. So this is change that was done just for demo purposes, that we reduce the size of the max memory change and then we increased it back. Just to show you that those kind of issues also will be detected by System Center Advisor and uh, flag change also will be detected and will let, uh, we, uh, Advisor will let you know ahead of time before you hit any issue. 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah uh, it's interesting because actually this uh, exact this property is related with one of uh, new monitors, uh, new memory monitors which we've implemented in the SQL Server Management Pack. It's a stolen memory monitor. You know that it's, uh, it's a well-known fact about SQL Server. It consumes memory and he never returns it to you. You can forget about any operating memory which is consumed by SQL, uh, by SQL Server. But sometimes he just not using it, either if it's consumed, it's, it's get it forever. That's why usually uh, IT administrators or DBA uh, set exact these settings. I mean the uh, max server memory, just to try to keep SQL Server in some limits. So, and in this case, uh, help us to, uh, to prevent the stolen memory case. So it also shows how the SQL Server Management Pack and advisor rules allows you to be very, pro very, very proactive, if you want, or less proactive, and monitor it with a SQL Server Management Pack. But so anyway, you, in, in some case, you maybe just can't use advisor. I don't know why. You shouldn't have that case, by the way. As yeah. long as you have internet connection, and it, uh, System Center Advisor service is completely free, just to highlight. So basically, there's no reason why you shouldn't <laughs> use System Center Advisor. Thank you, Joseph. Okay, so right now, uh, let's go uh, to SQL Server MP part, and let's uh, talk about some best practices. You can ask me. Okay, you just shown us a really great management pack with the cool dashboards. Why should I follow any best practices which you want to share with me? Why should I read operations guide? Why should, why should I learn how, why, why should I study how to monitor my SQL Server with a SQL Server management pack? So, and here I have another story to explain you why. So, here's a me with no shirt. So, I, <laughs> I, I hope that it, there will be no scandal at the MMS because you can see me without shirt. It's, it's pretty first time when you can see it at the MMS. By the way, so, uh, it's an X-ray of my chest which I've done about a month ago when I accidentally fault and uh, just uh, decided, okay, it looks like that looking to my symptoms and being search, I decided to play Dr. House. I, I have a broken rib. But fortunately, uh, I have a wife, and as, which is a very popular case. Wife is smarter than <laughs> her husband. And she said, go to hospital, don't play Dr. House yourself. Just get diagnosis from professionals. I went to hospital and they immediately uh, made x-ray, looked to this and said, it's not a broken rib, you just have some muscular pain that will, you, you will rehab in maybe one, two weeks. I was really disappointed because it's not so cool as a broken rib actually. By the way, uh, I learned a very important lesson. Uh, if I visit hospital, but nobody there have no idea how to use all equipment which they have there. It will be really useless for me. Nobody can say, guy, you have no broken rib, everything is okay with you. Because that, that people, doctors, they know how to use all this monitoring, all this diagnostic equipment. And sometimes our IT systems, our services which we monitor, almost complex as a human body. Fortunately, less complex. That's why you don't need to go to college, spend uh, about half of your life studying. Fortunately, right now, we just need to follow some best practice uh, which help you to monitor SQL Server better with the SQL Server Management Pack. So, and as usual, I have three important things which I want to share with you. First, uh, first best practice which I want to provide to you, it's a grouping, group everything, group instances, uh, create groups for uh, databases. Because I 
uh, I've, I have seen a lot of times when, you, uh, when we have a lot of overrides for every instance, for every database, and after that, we will go to hell with no option because you just can't figure out what's going on in your environment. That's why you need to create reasonable grouping in instances and databases and apply uh, configuration changes on groups preferable. Of course, I said reasonable, because uh, if you create, for example, development, staging, and production groups and allocate your database and instances across these groups, it's reasonable, because uh, health state for SQL Server in development is different comparing with the production environment. I, I hope that it's, it's pretty clear. For example, a lot of uh, creepy stuff could happen and in development, and operations don't need to care about it, because developers just play there. Everything's OK. It's a developer's game. But on production, it's absolutely unacceptable. Uh, but if you want to create, for example, groups like Africa, Europe, a Asia, and the United States, I th so it's, it's clear that it's not useful, because I hope that uh, your servers should, they, should have the same behavior in Africa and the United States with no any differences. I just can't imagine. Maybe in your case, somehow it can happen. But in, uh, uh, going about the general advice, it must be reasonable grouping. And uh, I want to pay another attention to database grouping. Because either if we have uh, several, uh, a lot of databases in, un, in, our, uh, in one DB engine, sometimes you also need to group it. Because you know that, for example, at least system databases like MasterDB, TemDB system, they need to be monitored somehow else for, because they used different way. You also may have, uh, for example, some uh, reporting database, which need to be mined to a different way comparing with, let's call it, for example, online transaction processing database. It's truly different scenarios with a different monitoring approach. Next, best practice. Uh, let's, uh, it's uh, rather addressing to, uh, to advisor, because we should uh, try to use the predictive monitoring as much as possible, to be proactive as much as possible. Because actually, in SQL Server Management Pack, we have some rules regarding space monitoring. When you can see alerts from this rule, it usually means that you already did. I mean, your server, your SQL Server is already dead. Because, for example, it's not a lack of free space. There are no free space. And the next transaction will fail with no op options. So, of course, this monitor also can say you that, OK, pre please prepare for funeral. But uh, I definitely want to ask you, try to use predictive monitoring. Let's call it defensive monitoring, uh, like we say about the defensive driving. When you drive such way to, pre to, prevent, to prevent any accident, not, uh, uh, and so here, I'm talking about monitoring, the same. Let's try to monitor our SQL Server to prevent it from any failures. And of course, ad adjust thresholds, which we have for uh, performance monitors for your environment. Don't count on the, the, default, on the default values. Let, it's better to be paranoid for the first time to set low threshold, for example, and then raise it up step by step. And uh, when, when finally you answered, OK, so right now I have no uh, alert noise. And the, uh, the third best practice, which I want to share with you, it's a using of low privilege. In the SQL Server Management Pack, we provided a lot of uh, runners profiles, which allow you to configure monitoring of the SQL Server Management Pack, either if it's clustered environment, either if it's a always on deployment, you're able to configure it to access all monitoring tools, all monitoring APIs, DMVs, et cetera, et cetera, with the lowest privilege which you can provide. Because uh, otherwise, you have to be a very brave person to be sure that nobody who have access to SCOM want to try to do something with your SQL Server, something bad. Because we already learned from today's session that uh, sometimes operations could be really bad, and we're, it, it's better to prevent them from doing some bad stuff with our SQL Server. Uh, with our SQL Server, especially, uh, we so sometimes we store, we persist in that SQL Server very critical information. And one more thing, 
It's like a biggest and most important best practice which I want to share with you. It's caused a lot of issues with the SQL Server monitoring. And it's very simple for you. It's very easy for you to follow it. Please, read the operations guide which we've created for you. <laughs> we've spent a lot of time to put all things which, uh, which you need to know about the SQL Server Management Pack Monitoring in our operations guide. There we described the low privilege configuration. There we described some key monitoring scenarios. And so uh, please read it. Of course, sometime in the future, we'll provide you one giant dashboard with a, with, and you will not need any operations guide. But so right now, I definitely recommend you please read the manual which we developed for you. Uh, and uh, I want to finish with uh, uh, some news about the SQL Asia database management pack, which will be released soon. So it's like a main news about the SQL Asia management pack that right now we know approximate date. It will be released in the May 2013, so, which means less than in two months. And there we will introduce tons of new features because if you uh, get a chance to take a first CTP version of the SQL Asia Management Pack, you could see that uh, it's just uh, like a basic monitoring. But right now, in the new version, we will have much more features, which, uh, which Go, brings the SQL Asia Management Pack functionality closer to the SQL MP functionality and provide the equally great monitoring solution for SQL Asia and for SQL Server on-prem. Uh, okay. Thank you, Roman. With all this, we would like to uh, uh, let you ask any questions you have. And if we, we almost running out of time, so if you don't have more questions that we cannot address, you can always find any of us and uh, ask the questions offline as but well. But before you leave this session, I want to say thank you, uh, all persons who already asked me questions. And I want to uh, be good for this person because I have special present to, uh, to two guys. That gentleman who asked about uh, tasks and that gentleman who asked about uh, the drill down scenario for a dashboard because you asked me about my favorite dashboard. So I, that's why I love you and I want to give you okay. some present. And while he's taking present, I will get, ask, uh, get your question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, check. So the SQL Server 2012 management pack, that's okay to um, import on top of, like if we have the 2005 and 2008 one? So the question is uh, whether 2012 yeah. management pack, can we import on top of SQL Management 2005 and 2008 Management Pack? Uh, SQL Server 2012 ma uh, Management Pack includes monitoring for, uh, for SQL 2005 and 2008 and 2008 R2 as well. Okay. It's uh, one Management Pack, so you can upgrade it. Yeah. Thank you so much for attending the session. Thank you very much.